Well, let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. Will you give it up one more time for this choir? <laughs> what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Where y'all going? I just... <laughs> Y'all leaving? Oh, man, I stayed to hear them. Look like that. Just... <laughs> I know what it is. They find out, Stuart, I'm from Louisiana, and all of them are Alabama fans. That's what... <laughs> that, that, that's, that's what it is, Brother James. That's what it is. That's all right. That's all right. I mean, y'all beat us eight years in a row. Can't we win one year? Lord have mercy. Give us one year, right, bro? Amen. I got one tiger in the house. Amen. Well, good evening. How's everybody doing? All oh, Alabama. See, see, just, just, just. <laughs> Giving obedience to God, my Father, Jesus Christ, who is the Lord and Savior of my life. I still thank you, sir, for this wonderful privilege that you've given me to be here for this uh, pastor's conference of the Alabama State Convention. I know, but I still know a lot of pastors and preachers across this city, state, and nation that can be here tonight. But Endo, I'm so honored that he thought enough of this street preacher from New Orleans, Louisiana, to have me to be here tonight and sharing uh, in this incredible pastor's conference. Uh, thank God for you, my brother, and thank God for the privilege that you've given me to be here tonight. Pastor Daniels and all the other officers of the pastor's convention, all the pastors of the state of Alabama uh, and all the guests who are assembled here tonight, I'm indeed delighted and excited because I have been invited to be here with you on tonight. I just thank God for this wonderful privilege. I love the state of Alabama. Matter of fact, when I was president of Southern Baptist Convention, the state of Alabama always led uh, 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 in our CP giving. You guys were always near the top and I always told Dr. Lance whenever I see him how much we appreciate all the churches of the state of Alabama and support that you give to the Southern Baptist Convention. Then on top of that, I've preached in many churches all across this uh, incredible state. Uh, as I said, uh, I, was, uh, I preach uh, more in Alabama uh, than I do in my own state of Louisiana because I'm always going. As a matter of fact, we, our convention is tonight also, but I'm here in Alabama uh, and then leaving tonight, flying out at 7.30 in the morning from New Orleans, preaching tomorrow for the Florida Baptist Convention. But I am just honored to, to be here and thank God for the wonderful privilege of sharing in the pulpit on tonight. I do bring you greetings, uh, seriously, from the wonderful state of Louisiana, the home of the LSU Tigers. Uh, can I say that twice? <laughs> I mean, come on, y'all got to love me anyway, amen? Y'all got to love me anyway. Uh, all the Auburn fans, y'all can thank me after the service, Amen. <laughs> Yeah, all the Auburn fans, y'all can thank me after. Danny, good to see you, man. Y'all can thank me after the service. It is just a joy and a privilege to be here. I wanted to also bring you greetings from New Orleans, the home of the Who That Nation, but the Atlanta Falcons messed that up. And just, so, you know, I, I know how Alabama fans feel now. Anytime a team come to your home stadium and beat you like the Falcons did yesterday, I, I do, it's just bad. But, uh, you know, it's a, everybody have a bad game, I guess. And that's just a part of it. But I'm so thankful for this wonderful privilege and opportunity to be here tonight with my friend Johnny Hunt, uh, who was supposed to be here at this time, but we had to switch because he has plane was delayed. But I was honored to come and share and be a part of this service and sharing and preaching on the, uh, the cross. Turn your Bibles with me tonight to the Old Testament, the book of, I, I, the book of Isaiah chapter 53 is where my assignment is from tonight, Isaiah chapter 53. And I want you to look at with me verses 4 through 6 of that chapter. Isaiah chapter 53 verses 4, 5, and 6 of that chapter. If you have it, please say amen. Matter of fact, y'all can say amen all throughout my sermon. I'm kind of used to it. Y'all know what I'm talking about, all right? Isaiah chapter 53, you'll find in verses 4, 5, and 6. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes... We are healed. All we like sheep 
have gone astray. I need to say that one more time. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. With that scripture in mind, with this conference theme in mind, I, I want to preach tonight from the subject, the significance of the cross. Quiet the significance of the cross. How has he been so successful for so long? How has he been able to pull it off for so long? Now keep in mind, this did not start with you and did not start with me. Think about it. He's been doing it since mankind has been created. Boy, he's been doing it since Genesis chapter 3. Man after man, woman after woman, person after person, single after single, couples after couples, family after family, generation after generation. How has the enemy, Stuart, been so successful? How has our adversary been so successful? Nathan, how has Lucifer, how has Satan been so successful at getting good people to do bad things? At getting Christians... Ray and Chuck, I know y'all here here somewhere, uh, uh, but do unchristian things uh, at getting holy folk to do unholy things at getting godly people to do ungodly things. In Alabama, what's so amazing, what's so surprising, what's so baffling, what's so intriguing about this is the kind of people who the enemy gets to fall. The kind of people who mess up, the kind of people who are giving up, the kind of people who are giving in. Brothers and sisters, I'm not talking about folk who are playing church. Alabama, I'm not talking about folk who just come to church every now and then. I, I'm not talking about folk who come to church uh, thinking that they're doing God a favor. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I'm talking about saved folk. I'm talking about those who confess to be born again believers, those who confess to be spirit-filled believers, those who confess to be regenerated, renewed, and redeemed believers. I'm talking about godly people. You're sitting next to many of them in this beautiful sanctuary on tonight. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, you've been sitting next to them every, uh, uh, since uh, this morning, if you've come, and, and Sunday when you were at church. Uh, how has the enemy been getting good people to fall? I'm talking, about, I'm talking about gracious greeters and unified ushers, godly people, dedicated deacons and, and praying preachers, uh, godly people, committed choir members and trusted trustees, uh, godly people, trained teachers and, and willing workers, uh, godly people, seasoned sisters uh, and blessed brothers, uh, godly people, committed couples uh, and saved singles, uh, godly people, uh, uh, unless you think that it started with you and me, no, I'm talking about people like Adam and Eve, uh, Abraham and Sarah, Noah and Moses, David and Solomon, godly people, Isaac and Isaiah, Saul and Samson, Elijah and Elijah, Ruth and Naomi, godly people, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, Joseph, Daniel, uh, Mary and Martha, Daniel, I'm talking about godly people, Esther and Elizabeth, Martha and Mar uh, Mary, uh, Jeremiah and Nehemiah, James and John, Thomas and Timothy, Paul and Phil Philip, godly people people, brothers and sisters, I'm talking about godly people. I'm talking about people in the like you and like you and like you and like me. I'm talking about people who love God with all of their heart, love God with all of their soul, love God with all of their might, love God with all of their spirit, yet because of the tactics of Lucifer, yet because of the tactics of Satan, Yet because, Sam, of the tactics of our adversary, because of the tactics of our enemy, we find ourselves every now and then. Notice I didn't say every day. Every now and then. Notice I didn't say every Friday night. Every now and then. Notice I didn't say every weekend. Brothers and sisters, hear me well. I'm saying that because of the tactics of Lucifer, choir, because of the tactics of Satan, pastors, because of the tactics of the adversary, pastors' wives, because of the tactics of the enemy, every now and then we find ourselves uh, as godly people doing ungodly things. Every now and then, we find ourselves as godly people 
love God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our spirit, but yet we find ourselves doing ungodly things. Hear me well, it's not a habit. It's not a lifestyle. It's not something you're known for. It's not something you have a reputation for. However, however, every now and then, you and I will find ourselves as godly people doing some ungodly things. That's why the Bible says in Romans chapter 3 and verse 10, there is none that are righteous. No, not one. Romans 3 and 23 say, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's why Romans 1 Peter, 1 Peter 5 and 8 say, be sober, be vigilant. Why? Because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion walking about, seeking whom he may devour. That's why Luke 22 and 31, Jesus says, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you like wheat. That's why the Bible said in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 8, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, uh, and the truth uh, is not in us. That's why Galatians chapter 5 uh, and verse 16 say, I say then walk in the spirit, and you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's why Romans 7 and 17 say, but now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells uh, in me. And finally, that's why our text says here in Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 6, all we like sheep have gone uh, astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, the fact of the matter is we do mess up sometimes. The fact of the matter is we make mistakes to it sometimes. The fact of the matter is we fall sometimes. That's a fact. There's no denying that fact. However, my friend, I've dro- driven all the way here from Norland to let you know that, yes, we mess up sometimes. Yes, we make mistakes sometimes. Yes, we fall sometimes. But the truth is we can get back up again. The truth is we can start all over again. The truth is we can be forgiven uh, again. The truth is uh, we can be made whole again. The truth is we can get it right again. And it's all because of what Jesus did on the cross. Yes, it's all because of what Jesus did on the cross. Hence the conference theme, hallelujah for the cross. So how do we get it together? Uh, our preachers, how do we turn this ship around? How do we get back on track? But imagine, how do we get back right with God? Well, that's the significance of the cross. That, that's, that's the provision that God has made through the cross. That's why Jesus was hung up for our hang-ups. And according to the text, there are three reasons why the cross is significant. Why the cross is significant. Three reasons for the provision of the cross. Why the cross is important to you and why the cross is important to me. First of all, number one, the reason the cross Alabama is significant, number one, is because of our sins. Because of our sins. Look what the Bible said, Isaiah chapter 53, the first part, verses 4 and first part of verse 5. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted, but... He was wounded for our transgressions. The reason why the cross is so significant is because of our sins. Brothers and sisters, the fact of the matter is we were messed up. We were marred. We were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. We grew up in sin, lived in sin, should have died in sin, could not walk right because of our sins, could not talk right because of our sins, uh, could not sing right because of our sins, uh, could not preach right because of our sins, could not teach right because of our sins, live by our own rules, uh, dance our own beat, too mean to live, not fit to die, going to hell and enjoying the ride, and one of y'all might have been driving the bus. Let me see if you're in here. Cussing like a sailor, drinking like a fish, high as a kite, sly as a fox, stubborn as a mule, and mean as a pit bull. Come on, you ain't been saved all your life. I know I'm talking about somebody inside beside me, Jen. That, that's how we were because of this sin nature that we're living on the inside of us, cussing like a sailor, drinking like a fish, high as a kite, sly as a fox, stubborn as a mule, mean as a pit bull. Oh, but one day, 
One day, one day, one day for reason that you and I can, ex can explain nor deserve uh, that we can't figure out. Somebody told us that God loved us. And though somebody told us that God, both somebody told us that God loved us and that he gave his only son Jesus to die for our sins. Uh, anybody beside me remember that day when you gave your heart and your life to Jesus Christ? You were messed up, you were tore up from the floor, but somebody told you about a man named Jesus Christ uh, who died on the cross for your sins uh, and you gave your heart and your life to Jesus Christ and because of God's love for you and me the Bible says surely he has borne our griefs every every tear that we've cried uh, he has borne our griefs uh, every loved one that we've lost he has borne our grief every attack of the enemy he has borne our griefs but not only has he borne our griefs the Bible says he has carried our sorrows he knew the load was too much to handle he put him on his shoulder and marched up a hill called Calvary for you uh, and for me. He picked us up uh, and carried us along the way because he knew we couldn't do it by ourselves. Uh, and because of our sins, uh, he was wounded for our transgressions. We broke the law, but he was wounded. We messed up, but he was wounded. We were rebels, but he was wounded. We misbehaved, uh, but he was wounded. We were criminals, but he was wounded. We were sinners, but he was wounded. But not only that, he was also bruised for our iniquities. In other words, he was hurt for our wickedness. We lied, but he was bruised. We were immoral, but he was bruised. We were corrupt, but he was bruised. We were evil, but he was bruised. We were naughty, we were unruly. We were selfish, but he was bruised. And you know what blows me away? He did it just because he loves us. That's why, I was in, that's why we stood. That's why we stood. Nothing we can pay, nothing we can give, no, no uh, sermon we can uh, preach, no song. That's why all of us stood a few moments ago when this youth choir was up there singing, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me hold again? Not, oh, how precious is the flow that makes me cry. Why there's snow? No other fount I know nothing but the blood of Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, the cross was significant because of our sins. But then there's a second thing according to the text while the cross was significant, not only because of our sin, but secondly, because of our sickness. Alabama, because of our sickness. Look at the second part of verse 5. He was wounded for our transgression. Here it is. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we were healed by his stripes, Kathy, we were healed. Brothers and sisters, because of our iniquities, we were sin sick. In other words, we were in hospice preparing to die. Because of our sin nature, because of all the things we've done, the places we shouldn't have gone, the things we should not have said, the stuff we should not have watched, uh, we had a sickness called sin that was living on the inside of us, and we were in hospice preparing to die. Because of our iniquities, we were sick. Our transgressions made us sick. Our iniquities made us sick. Our lifestyles made us sick. Our decisions made us sick. Our habits made us sick. Our choices made us sick. The drug abuse, the alcohol, the profanity, the lying, the cheating, the moral living, the gambling, the hatred, the jealousy, the bitterness, the gossip, the malice, the unforgiveness made us sick. Ladies and gentlemen, we were in bad shape. Uh, we were in hospice, and anybody that sick need to die. I will say that again. Anybody that sick need to die. There was no cure for our sickness. Uh, we were in hospice. No medicine can save us. No doctor can save us. We were going to die. There was no shot we can take. We were going to die. There was no pill we can can take. We were going to die. There was no medicine we can take. We were going to die. There was no doctor we can call. Dr. Oz couldn't help us. Uh, 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 Dr. Phil couldn't help us. We were on our way to hell. However, like the woman, Danny, with your sure blood, uh, after we did all that we can do, after we tried all we can try, after we spent all we can spend, uh, we were sick and tired of uh, being sick and tired of uh, being sick and tired. Uh, we heard about a man uh, by the name of Jesus Christ uh, who can change our lives. 
lives uh, and change our situation. God's only begotten son uh, who bore our griefs, uh, carried our sorrows, was wounded for our transgressions, was bruised for our iniquities, and because of our sickness, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and because of his stripes, we were healed. Yes. We were messed up, y'all. We were on our way to hell. We were in hospice, ready to die. But because of his stripes, we were healed. Because of his stripes, we were restored. Because of his stripes, we were renewed. Because of his stripes, we were redeemed. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, any beside me been redeemed? Anybody beside me, come on, don't play with me now. Anybody in the choir been redeemed? Come on, don't play with me now. Anybody beside me been renewed? Anybody beside me been restored? Well, guess what? It's all because of what Jesus did on the cross. It's all because of what Jesus, you have, not that you were so good, not that you were so kind. I don't care what side of the track you lived on, nothing you could have done. It was all because of what Jesus did on the cross. He was hung up. For our hang-ups. Jesus was hung up for our hang-ups. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, why is the cross so significant? Why the provision steward of the cross? Why is it that this president is, has given all of us who are preaching here today the assignment of preaching about the cross Ladies and gentlemen, it's because of how significant the cross is in your life and my life. Jesus died on the cross because of our sins. Jesus died, Alabama, on the cross because of our sickness. And finally, Jesus died up on the cross because of our salvation, because of our salvation. Ray and Chuck, look what the Bible says in verse 6. Brother Mezzer, the Bible says, all we like sheep. He didn't say y'all, he said all. Every last one, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord, Pastor Daniels, had laid on him the iniquity of us all. The significance of the cross Jesus died for our sins. Jesus died for our sickness. But also, Danny, he died because of our salvation. Brothers and sisters, all of us have messed up. Even you. Even you. All of us have messed up. All of us have gone astray. All of us have missed the mark. All of us at one time or another have turned to our own way. That's why I can't talk about you. That's why you can't talk about me. That's why we can't talk about them. That's why they can't talk about us. Because all of us, like sheep, have gone astray. Because the fact of the matter, in some area of our lives, all of us have gone astray. All of us, like sheep, have wandered. All of us, like sheep, have roamed. All of us, like sheep, have taken the wrong path. All of us, like sheep, didn't always follow the shepherd. All of us, like sheep, did not do what God told us to do. We wanted to do it our way. We wanted to do it the way we wanted to do it. And like wandering sheep, we should have been killed. Like Roman sheep, we should have been killed. Like disobedient sheep, we should have been killed. It should have been you and, and you and me up on the cross uh, because of our sin. But thanks be to God. I say thanks be to God. I say thanks be to God. God had a ram uh, in the bush who was ready to take on the sins uh, of mankind, uh, whose name uh, was Jesus. Not Muhammad, but Jesus. Not Buddha, but Jesus. Not Hinduism, but Jesus. God had a ram in the bush uh, who take, take on the sins of the world, whose name was Jesus. And the Lord has laid on Jesus the iniquity of us all. That's why John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave us only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life yes ladies and gentlemen yes Alabama Jesus was hung up for our hang ups Jesus paid it all all to him I owe sin has left a, a crimson stain but Jesus washes it white 
as snow. Ladies and gentlemen, that's significant. That's special. That's incredible. He bore our griefs. He carried our sorrows. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And the Bible said, with the stripes of Jesus Christ, you and you and you and me, we are healed. Heal the sea another day. Heal the singer another day. Heal the worship another day. Heal to teach another day. Heal the preacher another day. Heal to praise God another day. Heal to walk another day. Heal to talk another day. Heal to testify another day. And it's all because of what Jesus did at Calvary. All because of what Jesus did on the cross. My friend, don't ever let the devil tell you you're not loved. Don't ever let the devil tell you God don't care about you. Don't ever let the devil tell you you're not special. Don't ever let the devil whisper in your ears, particularly when you're going through difficult times, you are not important. Because everything about Calvary is because of God's love for you and for you and for you and for me. Jesus came. Jesus lived. Jesus suffered. Jesus bled. And Jesus died on the cross just for you and me. Wow, what love. That's pretty significant. The songwriter said, no greater love than God's love for mankind. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. He hung his head. And for you and for me, he died. But that's not how. The story ends. Three days later, he rose again, all power in his hand. Dead, where is thy sting? Grave, where is thy victory? And Jesus did it just because of you and because of me. That's why the cross is so significant. That's why the crucifixion was so significant, because Jesus did not have to do it. He didn't have to do it. The scriptures say he, he could have called thousands of angels to come and stand by his side. But he decided, he decided, he decided to die just for you and just for me. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, whenever you start reflecting back on your life, whenever you start remembering certain events in your life, let me encourage you. Let me beseech you. Let me remind you. Let me admonish you. When it comes to your spiritual life, never forget the cross. Never forget the cross. Never forget the significance of the cross. Jesus died that you and I might have a right to the tree of life. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus died so that you and I can have the tree of life. That's why we have victory in Jesus. That's why we have victory in Jesus. That was why we have victory in Jesus because of what he did on the cross for you and what he did on the cross for me. We have the victory that can only be found in Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I am so glad for the significance, for the significance significance for the significance of the cross because of what Jesus did on Calvary. He did it for you and 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 did it for me. The significance of the cross. He came, he lived, he suffered, he bled, he died, he gave his life for you and me. But that's not how the story ends. Three days later, he rose again. All power in his hand. Dead, where is thy sting? Grave, where is thy victory? We have the victory in Jesus Christ. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan just last night, get, get, get behind me because victory today is mine because of the cross of Jesus Christ. God bless you. I love y'all. Y'all pray for me. I'll pray for you.